They think it's all over. It is now. And if the United Kingdom's near 50 year association with the European Union didn't exactly climax with a thunderbolt shot from an English footballer earning him a hat trick and England the World Cup, the origin of that famous Kenneth Walston home quote from the 1966 final, it was still delivered by a born crowd pleaser. The argument that when it comes to the battle against Covid, Boris Johnson needs to temper his natural enthusiasm dominated this page last week. While I still believe that to be the case, his tremendous sense of self-belief was without doubt crucial in delivering such a beneficial Brexit deal. And there's no need to take my word for it either. A poll in one of Germany's best-selling newspapers revealed that many Germans are becoming dissatisfied with the growing EU tax burden and would now opt for the same deal. In Switzerland one leading politician has said talks between Switzerland and the EU must achieve what Britain has just pulled off, and in Norway the feeling is it provides for far more independence and freedom than they currently enjoy. Elsewhere in the world, the US said it was enthusiastic for the future and Turkey responded by promptly signing a new trade deal with the UK, something that was impossible before Brexit, as Turkey is in a customs union with the EU. Quite some reaction. Back in the UK, most business organizations rightly welcomed the deal, but perhaps the most interesting response was from the president of the CBI, Lord Balamoria. I know Cobra be a mogul Karen Balamoria well and have debated Brexit with him countless times on TV over a couple of years. He is an intelligent, well-briefed and fair man who argued the Remain cause with passion and vehement belief. For him to say last week, both sides deserve praise for reaching a historic UK-EU agreement. This is a big step and a mighty relief for many firms. This can be a springboard to make 2021 a year of recovery. Counts for a great deal. Back to Boris. And can there be anyone more buoyant to bounce on that springboard than our current BM? Consider this. Europe brought down no fewer than six preceding conservative PMs and, at times, it seemed likely to collect another scalp. It contributed to the demise of Harold Macmillan after his thwarted efforts to join the common market, remember that, and Ted Heath is still seen by many as the architect of the entire never-ending drama, as he signed the UK up to the EEC. The fractious relationship between Margaret Thatcher and other European leaders was well known and it was while she was at a meeting in Paris that her fate was sealed by a cabal of Tory plotters. Famously, and catastrophically, John Major labeled rebellious Eurosceptic colleagues as BS, having failed to wring enough concessions out of Brussels. David Cameron quit after failing to persuade the nation over the merits of his freshly brokered deal and Theresa May's Brexit means Brexit meant electoral humiliation. Now you can see just what Boris has achieved, and in the face of vengeful, self-serving pettiness from embattled French President Emmanuel Macron who emerges from the climactic talks a bitter loser who had to be brought into line by a more pragmatic Angela Merkel. It is only right that the postscript belongs to Boris Johnson. He once described the EU as a respectable project created with wholly honorable intentions by decent men and women determined to ensure their continent was never ravaged by war again. He was right. And it's so regrettable it was hijacked by those seeking to enforce fiscal and political union to the highest levels, and by whatever means possible.